Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say, I think right now it's like the best it's probably ever looked. <laughs> maybe maybe I'm getting better. Or maybe I was really bad before and now I'm, now I'm just okay. Yeah. <laughs> Hey guys, what's up? In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step -step guide on how to properly detail an RV. We are gonna use our Jeskar polymer sealant like I do in all my other videos. I know this is a little different because I normally hit you guys with boats, but today I had a customer that's been using me for years and we're gonna do his RV today. We're gonna wash it. This thing is nasty. It had white streak marks. He actually hasn't had it detailed since December of last year. So it's been, what, seven, eight months? And we're gonna do, give this thing a complete bath. We're gonna start at the roof, do the whole thing. We're gonna wax it. We're gonna use our Jeskar. And I am gonna give you guys a detailed step-by-step -step guide on how to do this properly. So stick with the video. I know it's a little different than you normally do, but I had a few people reach out to me and ask for an RV detailing video. So that's exactly what I'm giving you today. Like always guys, if you get any value out of this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell notification. So every time I make a video, it'll pop up. Also, one other thing that I'm gonna ask you guys to start doing is sharing these on Facebook. If you get value out of this, share this with your friends. Guys, that's how this channel is gonna grow. And ultimately, that's how you're gonna help others just like I'm helping you. So let's go ahead and get to work. All right guys, so we always start off on the roof. All I have here is a little Dawn dishwashing soap and my foam cannon, we spray down the roof. Now, if your customer isn't paying for you to do the roof, then obviously skip this step, but in this case, he's paying, so that's what we're doing. Now you're gonna see me using a little bit of Simple Green in this little pump sprayer, and I'm only really getting around the little vents and uh, the you know the little satellite thing there, and that's only just to remove a little bit of mold and stuff. He does have some trees behind, so a little bit of mold and stuff from the trees grow on the roof, but that should be just enough to get all that stuff up, and then you wanna brush it with a soft bristle brush on a pole, just enough to agitate it and then just spray it off. Now, one thing I do wanna note here is you're gonna see me using this pressure washer the entire time. A lot of customers will freak out when you bring out a pressure washer to do an RV and they assume that it's not safe. And it is safe and it's also not safe. It is not safe if you put that pressure washer on their seams or any caulking you can blow through the caulking and the seam work and it will cause the owner problems down the road with water damage and that is something you definitely do not want to do so if someone you know ask you if a pressure washer is going to hurt it because a lot of people say please do not use the pressure washer just ensure them that you will not go through their seams or put any pressure on their seams or caulking and you'll be fine also around the windows as well now we're gonna hop to the, the top lip here. I do usually do the top um, edge just from the roof, just cause it's a lot easier to do from the roof. And then everything else we're gonna do from the ground up. This customer, however, was not paying for his awning. So that's why we did not do the awning. Obviously do the top of the awning at this step. Now we're gonna move down to the sides. First thing I always do is I always start off on the back and then I work my way all the way around the RV. I take all the guesswork out of it, so I'm already coming down the ladder, so I put all my stuff and I start off on the back and I just work my way all the way around. As you can see here, guys, nothing super crazy. It's just like washing a car. You know, go ahead, rinse it down, use your foam cannon. Again, this is just Dawn dishwashing soap in my foam canning, and, it, and we basically want to strip off all the old wax so we can start off with a new surface. And you're going to also notice that I am not using that soft bristle brush any longer. I am using a special lamb's wool, synthetic lamb's wool brush head. This is going to stop it from scratching the surface. If you use a soft bristle brush on painted RV paint, it will scratch the living heck out of it. So do not do that. You're going to see brush strokes all in it. If you get this lamb's wool brush head, it's a little expensive, but it's not too bad. If you get the lamb's wool brush head, you will not scratch it and it's going to leave a perfect finish. As you can see here guys, we work our way all the way around the area. On the front here, this RV does have kind of an old clear bra that's kind of splitting and has a bunch of like bugs that have already eaten into the clear bra. So I'm just taking a little bit of Simple Green, but you don't have to use Simple Green. You can actually use Purple Power. Purple Power is actually what I normally use, but I actually didn't have any on my truck. So I had to run out to the store and bought some Simple Green. So that's another lesson. Obviously stay, uh, stay stocked up on your products, but Simple Green will work fine. Purple Power will work fine. Really any degreaser will do the job just spray it on the front end then foam it then brush it and then all your bugs and everything are going to come right off it's that simple 
keep washing all the way around um, you know just work your way all the way down rinse it off really good to minimize the the amount of water spots as possible and we're gonna hop over to our next step Alright guys, so next thing on the list is going to be the rims and tires and wheel wells. As you can see here, I'm using my simple green again on the wheels and the rims. These rims are actually in pretty decent shape, so you didn't have to do a lot of scrubbing, but just use a wet rag, a wet microfiber rag, and just kind of wash it off just enough to agitate it. You can also use a wheel brush as well. You know, whatever you have in handy will work. Just spray the wheels and the rims and then blast it off with your pressure washer, and that is typically enough to get all the brake dust and road grime off. Now on this one, we are clay barring the back using Meguiar's clay bar. You can actually pick these up at AutoZone if you like, just a simple light cut clay bar and with a little soapy water, just enough to lubricate the surface to leave it perfectly smooth. Now we're jumping to our polishing. We are doing the Zephyr Pro 40 metal polish. This is actually true metal polish. Zephyr is a great company. You can just put it on right by hand and wipe it off and it will leave it an amazing shine and it also protects it. It'll water bead for weeks and months. We are officially finished on washing it. We just washed everything. We got the rims, we got the back clay barred. And now I wanna point out a few things. You know, this thing was super dirty and in the washing process, you're bound to miss a few little spots here and there. So instead of what I do, instead of like re-rinsing it down and keep brushing it, we just do all of that by hand in the drying process. But on this side of the camper, it is really hot right now. It's in direct sunlight, so it's already dried. So all I'm gonna do is just take one wet rag and one dry rag and go ahead and hit all the spots that we miss. That's what old Dylan here is doing. And uh, basically, it's the, the roof on this thing is super oxidized. So when you're wetting it down, it's not necessarily dirt. It's just when you're wetting it down, it runs down and it dries on there white. So we want to get all that off before we go ahead and seal it up with our Jess Garf. And now it is time to apply our wax or our sealant. And this is what we're going to be using. It's Jess Car Power Lock. We're going to be using it on a Griot's Garage DA with a microfiber pad. With this product, you have to wait at least 30 minutes before you take it off. So what we're going to do is we're going to start on the back and work our way all the way around the RV. I'm going to apply it and I do have a helper today and he's gonna come by and take it off after 30 minutes all right guys so now it is time to apply our Jeskar power lock now as you can see I'm just going to start from the top and work my way down on the back and just get the back knocked out guys the waxing process this is going to be when it either makes or breaks the detail because it's gonna take you a ton of time if you do not do it efficiently first thing I want to note is you can see Dylan here doing the windows normally I do the windows at the very end but being he was just kind of standing around doing nothing I had him knock out the windows He's using one wet rag and one dry rag to do that. That's all you need. You don't need any fancy sprays or anything. One wet rag and one dry rag and it's gonna do the trick. So now on the waxing, as you can see, I'm going to do the full bottom side and then I'm gonna get on the ladder and do the full top side on this one side. The reason why I do this is because when you're on the ground, you can now reach up as high as you possibly can and wax or you know apply your sealant as high as you can so when you're on the ladder you don't have to guess where to stop you know where to stop you know where your line was or you know how far up you went so it just minimizes the time that you're on that ladder i don't i try to spend the least amount of time on that ladder as possible one for safety reasons and two if you don't have to bend over and reach all over in weird places on the ladder, it'll just save you a ton of time. Do the full bottom all the way from the front to the back and then get on your ladder and then do to wherever you stopped at, which was right below the windows on this RV. Now guys, one thing to note is when I am applying my Jeskar Power Lock, I'm not just applying it, I'm actually polishing it in on this finishing microfiber pad. It's gonna let the shine, it's gonna really bring out a shine and it will remove like slight watermarks and slight swirls. Not so much because the power lock does not have any cutting agents or any polishing agents in it, but it will just enhance the shine that much versus just letting it, you know, just, just applying it. This stuff is good on the clear bra, so you can apply it on the clear bra. Also, you can apply this on the mirrors, the chrome, the headlights, and that kind of thing as well. So as far as polishing it in, what I like to do is a side to side, up, down, and side to side motion. You can find this in all my other videos when it comes to boats, and the same thing is true for RVs and cars. 
go side to side, up, down, side to side, and then move on to your section. That is going to give you the best polishing results, and it's also going to make sure that you've applied the Jessicar Power Lock in a perfect, even fashion. Let this product sit on for a minimum of 30 minutes, at an absolute minimum of 30 minutes before you go taking it off. It has now been 30 minutes since this side is done, so that's why Dylan here has now got two microfiber rags, and he's just going to take off. And again, he's going to follow that same pattern, doing the whole bottom side, and then we're going to do the top side. So apply all of your Jeskar Power Lock, wait 30 minutes, and make sure everything is nice and dry, and take your microfiber rags and go ahead and remove it. All right, guys, I want to point out two things. One, I did not get the tire shine step in the video. Unfortunately, we forgot to film it. All we used was a spray of 303 for the tire shine. That is what the customer specifically requested. He did not want a normal tire shine. He only wanted 303, which is not necessarily bad. It just won't stay shining for very long, but it is actually a rubber and a vinyl protectant. So you can use 303 on tires. It's not a bad option. Also, the headlights, we did buff out the headlights. We didn't do any sanding or restoring. All we had to use was Manzerna 400 on a gray lake country foam pad on a flex 3401 vrg this can also be done on a rotary as well we used manzerna 400 on a flex 3401 vrg and we got the headlights looking perfect Well guys, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know it's a little different. It's not just my normal boat detailing video, but I hope this helps you out because guys, let's face it, we do boats, we can do cars, we do RVs, and everything that we can do to make a little more extra money is worth it. Thanks a lot for watching. Please comment down below and we look forward to seeing you on our next video.